Okay, so now we're going to talk about some example problems from section 4.2. So the first thing is use the, or determine the exact values uh, given this particular unit circle for the six trig functions of angle theta. So we'll have to figure out the cosine, sine, and tangent. We'll kind of start there. Now please bear in mind this is a coordinate on that point for that angle, which means the cosine is simply the x value, so it's negative 4 fifths. The sine would be the y value, so it's negative 3 fifths. The tangent would be the ratio of the sine to the cosine, so sine or negative 3 fifths over negative 4 fifths or negative 3 fifths times negative 5 fourths. Negative times negative is positive, the 5's cancel. So it is 3 fourths, okay? Now, we can then use these values to figure out the corresponding reciprocal functions. For instance, we'll start easy. Cotangent would be 4 thirds. Take the reciprocal. The cosecant, which corresponds to the sine, would be negative 5 thirds, its reciprocal. And the secant, which corresponds to cosine, would be negative 5 fourths. That's about it. Okay, find a point on the unit circle that corresponds to this. So 5 pi over 4. So remember, pi over 4 would be this. So that would be 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, right? And then 5 pi over 4 would be right here. So 5 pi over 4 is going to have root 2 over root 2, root 2 over 2 for the both the coordinates, except in this case, because it's in this quadrant, would be the both be negative, because they're both in the third quadrant, negative root 2 over 2. So the point on the unit circle that corresponds would be negative root 2, negative root 2. Negative 4 pi over 3. So there's a couple different ways to go with this. One is to count, but remember, because it's negative, um, it's going to be counting in the clockwise direction. So that's going to be about, so four thirds. So one third, two thirds, three thirds, negative four pi over three, right? Five pi over three, six pi over three. So that's one, two. This is the same as saying, so negative four pi over 3 is the same as saying 2 pi over 3, which means that corresponds to pi over 3, which we know to be 1 half root 3 over 2, except it's in the second quadrant. So that would mean that we're talking about the same coordinates, except the x will be negative, so it'll be negative 1 half, and the y will be positive root 3 over 2, just like that. Okay. Find the sine, cosine, and tangent of the real number, 5 pi over 3. So 5 pi over 3 corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4. This point over here, right, 5 pi over 3, is related to pi over 3, which is 1 half, right? So if you can remember what it is in the first quadrant and relate it, then it's a reflection, so it'll still be a positive x, but a negative y. So 1 half negative root 3 over 2 would be the point, which means the sine would be the y, so negative root 3 over 2. The cosine would be the x, or 1 half. And the tangent would be the y over the x, or the sine over the cosine, so negative root 3 over 2 over 1 half, which is negative root 3. 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 is like going almost all the way around. In other words, it's the same as saying negative pi over 6, which means that it corresponds to pi over 6, a.k.a. root 3 over 2, 1 half, except if you count it out, you will get here, which is 11 pi over 6. That is almost 2 pi, right? Um, so it would be root 3 over 2, negative 1 half. Um, that means the sine is going to be negative one half, 
the cosine will be square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent will be negative 1 half over square root of 3 over 2, which is negative 1 half times 2 over square root of 3. Twos cancel out. We get negative 1 over square root of 3. We don't leave it like that. We multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. So we get the square root of 3 over 3. That's it. Okay, find all six possible trig functions of this real number. So 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4 would be, well, let's see. 1, 2, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7 pi over 4 is here. And it's related to pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. So that means that this is root 2 over 2 negative root 2 over 2 because it's in quadrant 4. So cosine root 2 over 2. The sine is negative root 2 over 2. The tangent is this over this. And they're the same, except it'll be negative 1. Now, we'll go easy here. The cotangent, what's the reciprocal of negative 1? Negative 1. Um, the cosecant, the secant are going to be very similar, except one's going to be negative, one's going to be positive. The reciprocal would be 2 over root 2, which means you have to multiply by root 2, right? So you get 2 root 2 over 2, a.k.a. root 2. So that means that this is positive root 2, and this is negative root 2. That's it. Okay. Evaluate this trig function using its period as an aid, because right now this has been gone around far too many times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take negative 19 pi over 6, and I'm going to add 2 pi. Now, 2 pi is the same as what? 12 pi over 6. I'm going to add 2 pi until I get something that's positive. So negative 19 plus this would be negative 7 pi over 6. And then I'm going to add another 12 pi over 6. I'm going to keep adding 12 pi over 6 until I get something that's positive, which in this case would be 5 pi over 6. Now 5 pi over 6 should be recognizable as an angle right over here, almost, right, at pi. So 5 pi over 6 which corresponds to pi over 6, of course, which is square root of 3 over 2, 1 half, except it's been reflected, so it's going to be negative, and the x of positive. Let's clean that up. Negative root 3 over 2. Negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. Trigonometric functions. Evaluate sine and cosine. So sine of theta, oh, I'm sorry, we actually know what theta is. Sine of negative 19 pi over 6 is the same as the sine of 5 pi over 6, aka 1 half. And the cosine of negative 19 pi over 6 is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Okay. Use the value of the trigonometric function to evaluate each function. This is sine, which is an odd function, which means that sine of opposite t equals opposite sine t. By definition, that's what odd means. So what is sine t? Well, if sine opposite t is equal to 3 eighths, then the sine of t would be equal to negative 3 eighths. Okay? So sine opposite t is the opposite of the sine of t. So the sine of t would be negative 3 eighths. Cosecant would be what? Well, cosecant is the reciprocal of this, so we just take the reciprocal of that, so it would be negative 8 thirds. And that's it.